Brother Gary, with you open some things. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today. And Lord, we ask you to uh, lead and guide and help us in everything that we uh, say and do for you and, and to get us excited about uh, uh, this service. Lord, to prepare our hearts and prepare our minds to take just the just the the just and everything that you want us to have out of this service. Bless the pastor as he leads us. In your name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, I, I, I kind of hesitated in having the light on here. I thought as I'm preaching, you need to look into the light, okay? <laughs> but I don't think that works, okay? <laughs> Amen. Take your Bibles, go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. I'll start reading verse 1. says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, 
even when we were dead in sins, again it says, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. We find that word quicken there is a Bible word. We don't really use it too much today. But it means made alive. Made alive. Anybody alive here? Now it really refers to spiritually made alive. Anybody born again? Amen. That's what it's talking about. But I also like the word quick. I like the part of this says, uh, uh, when it says quickened, I'm thinking about I'm alive and I'm quick. I want to challenge you uh, this morning. If you've got this life, they didn't know it, but uh, over here it says, and this is my title this morning, it says, Start Your Engine. Start your engine over here too. Let's run right by, by you over there, Raymond. Amen. That's right. Uh, we need to start our engines. Now, if you're, you're here this morning, you've never been born again, there's nothing to start. Okay? Now, uh, um, when I think about, uh, or there's not much to start, the fact is, the Lord wants to give us an engine. And I thought about uh, engines. Uh, it kills me today. That when, I, when I was growing up, the big thing was big engines. We like big engines. And uh, today they got these four cylinders. We call them four bangers. I, I don't know, but uh, and you know what they do? They put a. Uh, I notice what they do with them. They put a big muffler. You notice that big muffler they put on them things? And I don't know what it's supposed to do. It just sounds like it sounds like a rubber band wound up tight. They go around you and they think they're tough. I tell you, it's a disgrace. <laughs> I, I I know what it's. I tell you what. Uh, uh, we find today a lot of folks try to put a muffler on their spirituality, amen, and all it is religion, it's a disgrace. You know what God does? He can take a four-cylinder, though, and he can make it powerful. 427 Cobra Jet. Some of you don't even know what that is, okay? Put some mufflers on that, put some dual exhaust, put some headers on that thing, it's going to sound good, isn't it? That's what we need. We need that, amen. I don't want you to start a four-banger. I want you to start that 427 Cobra Jet, okay? You need to start your engine. There's many reasons why maybe we can't start our engine. Uh, maybe it's out of gas. Maybe it's the battery. Maybe it just needs a tune-up. Maybe we need something this morning, Amen. When I'm at home, I have a little thing I pretend. Uh, my grandkids, they like to play chase. And chase involves running. And it's in my house. We make circles around. We've got a big area we can run, and we hide here. We run that. And I started something a while back, uh, and uh, they believe it. I, I, we have an exercise bike that's in our family room. It's supposed to be for exercise, but it just sits there as an ornament. And uh, but so when we're playing chase, every once in a while I go over to that exercise bike, and I get on that thing, and it may, you got to go like this, and you go like this, and I do it as fast as I can. I go fast as I can. Then when I get off, I say, "Oh, look over at Mike," and says, "Now nah, I've got the power. Now nah, I've got the speed. You better watch out." Okay. And so they they believe that. And they start screaming. They're running off. But now they try hopping on that. I need to get some speed. I need to get some power. And you know what? This morning, I tell you what. Oh, we need to come to the throne of God. And he has some power for the child of God. Anybody need any? We need it. Amen. And uh, It's not the exercise bike. Amen. The Bible tells us. It told us John the Baptist made this statement about him, made it about even Jesus, says that as he grew, he waxed strong in the spirit. You know, it tells me there's more potential. When we, 
when I met my wife, she had a, a I think it was an 83 or 84 Thunderbird. Five speed. But it had a four banger in it. But you know, I didn't realize until we had it for some time. I knew it said on the side of it, it said turbo. And I didn't know what that meant, but then I tried it one day and I floored that thing and that turbo kicked in and I was really impressed. You can take a four banger and it can, it can move. I tell you what, I have a God. You know what, he's not here this morning to add an accessory to you. He's here to give you, he's not here to give you an overhaul. He's here to give you a new engine. And praise God, when you get that new engine, amen, you know what didn't any want you to do? It's an awful thing. I tell you, if you're here and you say you're saved, he gave you some power. And you know what we need to do? Start your engine. That's what we need. We ne the world needs to see that. In order to get that, we've got to make some contact with God. Amen? We need to get closer to Him. And so I want to share just a few things this morning. First of all, if you're here and you're lost, a lost person can get a new engine. Amen. Isn't that good? Some of you got a new one one day. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. You find in the Bible there's a, a wicked man. You find the Bible said that he had an unclean spirit. I tell you, that's a bad engine. The Bible tells us, and I won't turn there, but you'll find there that he, he cut himself. You said he didn't have no control of himself. They tried to chain him. They couldn't control him. He was possessed. Had an unclean spirit in him. But you know what? One day Jesus came by, and I tell you, it's a wonderful story. This one that had no hope ran around naked in the, in the, the graveyard. I tell you what, he just was possessed. I tell you, he was being led of, of the devil. We just read a text here that told us about our old life, said we all had that. But you know, one day Jesus came by and he spoke to that there and he said, get out. And you know what happened? He got a new engine. And boy, the others saw that. They were scared to death, never seen anything like that. They said, boy, Jesus, that's amazing. They didn't even want Jesus. After they saw they all got scared. And the Bible tells us that this one came and he sat down in his right mind. You know what? He had a change that took place. You remember a change that took place in your life, amen? I tell you, what did we just mention that song here last Sunday? What he's done for others, he can do for you. Amen, if he saved somebody else, he can save you. Amen, he can take that, that, that power that you have and he can put his power. The Bible said that many has received me to them gave the power to become the sons of God. You don't have enough power to be a child of God. God gives us that power. And praise God, we find that. And then you find there this one. He had a change. He was not the same. He said, Jesus, I see you're getting on that boat there. I want to go with you. He wanted to be where Jesus was. He wanted to do the thing Jesus did. And you know what he said? Jesus, no, you go hold your hometown and you tell them the things that have been done to you. The Bible says he went and he published everybody. Woo! You know what happened there that day? He got, he started his engine, amen, and he used that power that God gave him. Boy, we need to be using the power of God. Boy, I tell you what, I don't know, some of your mufflers, they sound like that rubber band, amen. Hallelujah. We need to have a better power. We need to have, we need to tap into the, the power plan of God, amen. We find, oh, I believe Zacchaeus got it. Zacchaeus, amen, he was a bad guy. He was a cheat. He was a thief. But you know what? Praise God. He came down out of that tree there and Jesus said salvation has come to this house. You know what happened? The Holy Spirit they got a hold of Zacchaeus there and I tell you it wasn't the same. You'll find that same one that was a cheat trying to collect all that money. He said I'll pay back everybody four times. I'm going to make things right. You know what did that? The power of God. We need the power of God. I'm glad to tell you what. You need a new engine this morning. That's what we need. That's what happens. The Bible said you must be born again. And boy, I tell you, I'm, that's a Bible verse. You say, folks, are you born again? They'll look at your cross side and say, what you're talking about, amen? And you know what? This morning you ought to know if you've been born again. The Bible says you're a new creature. 
Anybody been a new creature? Yeah. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I'll say it again. I said it at the Real Fellowship. I said, amen. When were you lost? You remember when you were lost? If you can't remember when you were lost, amen, you never got saved. Praise God. There was a day in your life you were lost. You knew you were, you were corrupt. You knew you were in trouble. And praise God uh, for God that sought you out and redeemed you. How wonderful. Well, there's another character in the Bible, and uh, he also was lost, but really didn't know it. Now, this uh, first one we talked about, I'll tell you, no doubt about it, he was wicked. But we find another man in the Bible in Acts chapter 18. I never really preached on this man, but uh, it's a man that's not too famous. His name is Apollo. Acts, uh, Acts chapter 18. Verse 24, it says, A certain Jew named Apollos. Born as Alexandria, an eloquent man, a mighty in the scriptures. He knew the word of God. He came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake, he taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom in a Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto him, they expounded in him the way of God more perfectly. You know, there's a lot of good folks need to get expounded a more perfect way. It's not by your works, it's not by the water, it's by the blood, it's by grace and they shared with him. And praise God, I believe that day and something new happened. He got a new engine, amen. He wasn't the same if you read on. And when he had disposed to pass into um, Acaria, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him who when he was come helped them much which had believed. Now what does it say? Through grace. Verse 28, and he mightily Convince the Jews and that publicly showed by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. He just didn't talk now. He had a power plan. He convinced. And praise God, I'm glad to tell you what, again, this morning, amen. You know what, there's a song, uh, sometimes uh, the group sings, it says, I just started living. I looked at that up this morning. It says, I found me a brand new life. It changed my direction. I washed away all my strife. I'm a newborn believer. It's holy and filling. The days are getting brighter. My Lord, my load is getting lighter. I just started living. I like that third verse. It goes, don't you look at me funny, you old prophet of doom. I'm not one, one bit discouraged. I'm feeling no gloom because I have God's spirit. And it's totally filling. I gave up on pouting. I got no time for doubting. I just started living. Anybody know about that? Started living, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God, amen. And I may tell you what, though, I found, I believe a lot of Christians, they got excited one time and they got started living. But you know what? I'm going to tell you again this morning, I'm going to encourage you to start your engine. I think it's been turned off. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to share a little bit to the saved folks. Well, if you're here and you're lost, there's a new engine for you. I tell you how wonderful it is to get a new engine. <laughs> Amen. He go, burns on the inside. Amen. How wonderful that is. Well, if you're saved, I want you to start your engines. I just, you know, I shouldn't have to tell you this. But... Uh, First thing, area I believe we need to start in that should be made alive is worship. Amen. Start your engines. Amen. I preached at the Real Fellowship. Had a good time. I was a little, a little caught off guard. I didn't really, I don't know a lot of them, and and they don't really didn't introduce. I don't know. I I came in there. I know there was a young couple. I know they were shaking hands and. Now, we didn't know. We were talking, and we didn't know. We figured they were greeters, and, and then, uh, I don't know. I mean, no one came to me. I didn't know. They didn't know who I was. I didn't know who they were, and, uh, 
And then they got up there and announcing, and they said, well, and uh, Brother Brad, uh, you know how the, you know, Anvil Son is going to speak for us. And I know they kind of looked around and said, now, which one's he, you know, and I have him right here. Amen. And then I realized who the preacher was there. And uh, so I, I didn't know, uh, uh, it, at least for me, it was a little stuffy at first. And uh, when I got up to preach, Sister Laura, she whispers to me and she says, can you liven them up? <laughs> did I liven them up? Amen. And it did help to have some of our folks there, amen. amen. Now, they were mostly on this side. Now, this side over here, whoo. Now, I know, Barbara, you were in the back, but you were way in the back, but you didn't see what I saw up front and all that. And, amen. Uh, um, I tell you what, we ought to starve our engines. Amen. Now, some, it seemed like I had to crank pretty hard the other night, didn't I? I mean, I had to get right down close, amen. I tell you, I don't know if they're used to that, but this is, I don't know. I don't know if there was any Baptist there. I don't know. I know there was Methodist there, and I know there was Christian church there, and I didn't know who was there, to be honest. No one introduced themselves. I found out there were some Baptists there. But anyway, amen, I, they weren't shouting Baptist very good, amen. I, I tell you what, and they weren't amening too much, but I, by the time I got down, I heard a big old amen. And right. And you know what I think they thought to themselves? I don't think I started that engine for a long time. You know, it's good to start the engine. Hear that rumble. Feel that power. Amen. Praise God. I want you to start it. And when it comes to worship, the Bible says that we need to worship him in spirit. Now, if it's our flesh, our flesh is going to be like a bump on the log, and we're going to manufacture it. But if we just turn that, that engine on, turn the power of God on, you know what? Something's going to happen. Now, I didn't say you had to shout. You don't have to say amen. There's something's going to happen, amen, when the power of God comes on the scene. I think about the woman in the Bible, and uh, praise God, she was the weeping woman. You know what she did? She, got, she turned on the engine, amen. They were all there, that religious crowd, and they were all over at Simon's house, amen. And praise God, they're all thinking, patting themselves on the back. We're pretty good. We got Jesus in our house. But there was one woman that came in there, and she dropped down on her knees, and she started to cry and she wiped the feet of Jesus with her tears, amen. You know what she did? She turned the engine on. Boy, Jesus got on the others and he said, boy, I tell you what, ever since I've been here, you haven't done nothing, amen. All they were worried about what we're going to eat, amen. They're worried about other things. But I'm going to tell you what, we need to turn the engine on, have some real worship. Amen. It's not necessarily a shout. It might be a tear. But I tell you, something's going to stir you. I was thinking about drag car racing. You ever watch them drag car racing? I'm going to talk some with our kids on some of that there a little bit. You know, uh, but I, I tell you what, what I like about them drag car racing, they're at the start line. They start that engine. Brrr, you've seen that, amen. I try not to do that. But I, I tell you, there. you know what's happening? The whole thing's shaking. You ever see that? I mean, the whole body's shaking. Did you say, I didn't say you have to shake, amen. But I'm going to tell you what, you know what the source of that shaking was? It's that engine. There's a power plant in that thing. And it can't hardly contain itself, amen. And you and I, we've got a power that comes from a God, amen, when we got saved and it dwells in us. Turn it on. You might be surprised, it might shake something. Amen, it might get something loose. Praise the Lord. Amen. Boy, I like that. You find the woman, other woman, I believe she worshipped. You know what she did there? She didn't have much. The Bible said all she had was one might. And you know what? She was in that service there. She maybe thought to herself, she said, boy, I don't have much, but I love my Savior. And I'm just going to give it all. You know what the Lord's looking for you and I to do? Give it all. And I'm not talking about empty out your bank account. I'm talking about whatever he wants. You just surrender and you say, here I am, Lord. I mean, that's what he's looking for. That's the kind of worship he wants. But you just turn it on. Amen. You'll say, yes, Lord, whatever you want, I'm going to do.
Praise the Lord. We need that, don't we? I tell you, when's the last time you started that engine? I tell you, it's good to start the engine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Rev it up. Rev it up. Amen. Praise the Lord. By the way, you know what? He's alive. We're not. We're here worshiping. We're not worshiping to the wall. I'm not worshiping to some statue. He's here. He's alive. And he deserves our presence. He deserves our praise. He deserves it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get, let's turn it on. Amen. I shouldn't have to every Sunday wind you up tight. Now I'll try. If I have to, I'm going to. Pray for me that I'm wound up tight. Amen. I got to pray. I'm preaching to myself here too. It don't take much. It seems like us to get just idling. Start your engines. Amen. Well, I believe the word of God is also made alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, again, it kind of goes along with this. You know why? You know why? You know, this, this book is so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Now, by the way, I'm, you know, I have a lot of uh, cards and things and, that I save from people, and some have gone on to glory. Now, if I went and looked at those today and started reading them, you know what? It would just be like they were here today because they're alive. They're still there. They may not be here, but they're in eternity. So I read that and I say, well, that came from such and such. And boy, I tell you what, I'm there in glory today. Hallelujah. It's alive. That letter is alive to me. I'm going to tell you what this book here isn't written written someone that's in the grave. There's a lot of books where people come and gone and died. They've left a book and how wonderful that is. But when this speaks, he speaks. Boy, I looked at that. I like in verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 1, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. It says, notice what it says here. You know, this ought to get your engine going. Amen? It says, if ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It says, ye were sealed. My land. We ought to get excited about that. Aren't you glad for that? Praise the Lord. Look in chapter 2, verse uh, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved. Aren't you glad that's real words from God? It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And it says, not of yourselves. Thank you, Lord. Imagine if it says you're saved of yourself. That's not what God said. That gets alive to me. I like that, amen. I'm saved by grace, not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You ask somebody if they're saved, say, why? They say, well, I'm a good person. You're boasting. I say, you're saved and say, why? Well, I go to church. You're boasting. You say, well, I've been pretty good. I'm a pretty good moral person. You're boasting. The only reason I'm going to get to heaven is because it was a gift that God gave me and I received it. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That ought to get us excited. That ought to get us skipping. That ought to get us uh, uh, excited and get that engine going. Amen. Praise the Lord. I shouldn't have to. We're at that real fellowship and maybe that was just for the real fellowship but they had a bulletin and they said, now, now this song here is our worship song. That's what they said. That's what it was. And I thought, well, okay. Okay. And then the next one was, this is our prayer song. And I'm not, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe they were just for that thing there. But I thought, you know, I, I tell you, we shouldn't have to manufacture anything. Amen. You and I ought to have a, a power in us and tap into it. And why don't we turn it on? Good night. Tomorrow you'll find out. You'll get on the mess. And you know what I'll say? You didn't turn it on. He's the power is there for us. Praise the Lord. Well, the word of God was made alive when you got saved. Before you're saved, you still think he's dead. But I know he lives. I know he lives because he lives in me. Amen. Well, 
Also, there's the work and the walk and the witness in, is alive. Boy, I tell you, you know what Jesus said to Peter? He said, follow me. You know what he said? I'd like to interview Peter. You know what Peter would have said? I just started living. I just started living the day and started following him. Amen. I tell you, he took him some places. And maybe places were not too easy. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's another story. I, I read this recently here. I like this woman. She's bent over. She had a hard time walking. And what's interesting to me, the Bible tells us that um, it's in Luke chapter 13 that she had the spirit of infirmity. That was a bad spirit. I mean, it had a badness. You know, sometimes we can get badness in us and we're not able to walk, amen. I'm not going to read all that story, but it's in Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 13. She was bent over, amen. She had the effects and what an awful thing. And sometimes the old devil can get you to slow down, get you from walking and working and witnessing for the Lord. Amen. But you know what came by that day? The Lord recharged her. She got up like this. And you know what it says? She glorified God. Woo, glory, it's been a while since I've done that. This is good, amen. I'd like to see behind the scenes. I'd like to see the next chapter. I'd like to see the life, what really took place there and how you can see that. But praise God, we find this morning, I want you this morning to start your engines. Amen. Get some life. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yesterday I went... Uh, I went down here on this side of the highway and went down a blotcher and went to try to knock on doors and give flyers. And, and uh, then I went on that side of the highway, come back from blotcher, going over there, and I went over in Paris, crossing over there, and came back this way around here. And, and uh, the Bible told Jesus, Jesus told the 70, he sent 70 out two by two. And you know what he said? I'm going to send you out among wolves. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Anybody want to do that? Well, I was thinking about that. I went over there. I was over on Roger and Rhonda's road right over here, and nobody was home. I don't know. I heard things and everything, so they might stop there on the way. I, because they have, I noticed right off the bat, they got some big dogs. I don't understand people. I mean, I saw one, I mean, big dogs. One, two, three, four. And then I got out of the car. You know, and then, uh, while I'm doing this, I'm praying. <laughs> and praise God, intervened. Then I looked, there's a real big dog. And he didn't move, but he looks mean, really mean. And I, so I thought, well, because sometimes I see a, I that yellow flyer, and sometimes something like that sets off a dog. <laughs> it didn't, praise God. So I went to the door, and they're all okay, you know, except that big one. And I'm knocking on the door, boom, 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 come on, please, somebody come to the door, hurry. And I don't know, there's like four cars there. I swear I heard some kids screaming in the back. And so then I started, I thought, well, I just don't want to give up. So I started walking this way, and I walked around the house trying to go in the back, but I don't want to be doing like a burglar or something, you know. And, and so I walked over the back, but I, I got parts of the back, but I still didn't see nothing. So I thought, well, I'll go back. And all the whole time, these dogs are surrounding me. But I just left a flyer. You know, I felt defeated, really. I, I wanted to get somebody home. But you know what? When those, when those 70 that came back, you know what the Bible says? They were rejoicing. Now, I, had, if I found out yesterday, you either get someone real nice and, or they're just plain cold. And uh, you know what? It feels good to do something for Jesus. It does. I don't give no one's home. Put a flyer. It felt good to do it. Amen. I praise God the wolves didn't get me. And you know what? I have a God that wants to put some life in us. And it's in our walk. Amen. Praise the Lord. By the way, why do we serve him? Why do we try to do anything for him? I'm going to remind you, he is alive. He's alive. The last thing I was thinking about that comes alive is I, I put our worries are made alive. You know what worries will do? It'll kill you. They'll pull you down. But I'm going to tell you what, there's a power that can help our worries. You know, that, you know what we do when we worry, we should do? Pray. I believe this 
power in prayer. Anyone believe that? You know why I believe there's power in prayer? Because when I speak, he's there, he hears, he's the power, he's able this morning. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, they says they prayed, and you know what? The place was shaken. You know what they did? They started their engine. They turned the key. We don't pray enough. You know what happens when we pray? Power comes down. You find Peter was in prison. There's so many examples. Peter was in prison. That's an awful thing. But the Bible says, but prayer was made by the church. Yeah. You know what we can tap into? Power. So well, that seems pretty bleak. He's in prison. He's in chains. And you know what? Hang down. An angel came down. Got him set loose. He walked out through there. The gates opened up. I'm going to tell you what. He came knocking on the church door. They ought to got excited. Amen. But do you know what happened there? The point of the video is, there's power in prayer. And when we come together, don't take it lightly. When someone says, pray for such and such, pray for this, we need to be praying, amen. You can tap into a powerhouse that can make a difference. We act like we are out have no hope. I'm good night. We find Peter and Silas prayed and they praised. By the way, praising is praying too. And in the middle of the night there at midnight, you know what happened? The power of God came down. And I'm not saying, amen, the building's going to shake here or when we pray, but the presence of God is going to come and he's going to get rid of that worry. He's going to take care of that problem. We have a God this morning who lives. We got to come to church realizing we got a risen Savior. I got to have an Easter sermon every Sunday, don't I? Amen. He lives. He's alive. We ought to have some spunk about us. We ought to have some zeal about us. We ought to have some weeping about us. We ought to have some joy about us. We ought to have some drive about us. We got some hope here this morning, amen. Praise the Lord. We ought to be happy. Praise the Lord. God's so good. I thought about kids. I, I think uh, Cindy went to the neighbor kids over here yesterday, and I, I talked to him earlier about it, but she brought those kids over here. And they, if you go in the back, they've got some good decorations. We've got more than we got here. And I'm confident those kids came in here, and they looked and said, whoa. And you know what? I'm confident they want to come. They may not get to come. But you know what? They saw something that said, this looks like it's going to be fun. And I'm going to tell you what, you and I have something that the lost and dying world ought to see that you and I got something that, you know what, I'd sure like to have some of that. Our problem is we're not starting our engine like we need to. And when I got up this morning, I said, Lord, start my engine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just keep me going. Amen. Until I run out of gas. And then just fill me up again. Amen. The Lord's good. This morning, we need some life. Start your engines here this morning. Amen. He wants to. He wants to give us first a new engine. Then he wants us to start that one he gave us. Let's all stand this morning. Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for the day of my life. Lord, I got a new engine. I got, you came into my life. I opened that door and you came into my heart. Haven't been the same ever since, Lord. But Lord, there's times I know I've got a powerhouse there, but I just don't use it. I don't turn the engine on. Lord, I need it in worship this morning. I need it this morning, amen, praise God, uh, through the word. I need it in my walk, in my witness, in my work. I need it for, in, in the power, in my worries. Lord, I, I don't know what need we have this morning, but you do. Lord, I want others to see this power plant. I want others to know there's a power that's, that comes from above. I want the place to shake. I want our soul to shake. I want our hearts to be stirred, Lord. I pray you have your way. Lord, just thank you in Jesus' precious name.
Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. When's the last time you turned that key? When's, when's the last time you, you started that engine? It can be greater. It can be better. Says it waxed strong. Rev it up. You need it. You need it today. You're going to need it tomorrow. And boy, I got good news. He's got enough. He's got the horsepower to get you through. Have you started living? Let's not limit what God can do. The Bible says He's able to do more and far above that we even ask.